Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for inviting me to speak this morning. I uh, welcome the opportunity to talk about our, our little project with uh, Mark. We're very excited with the Darlington refurbishment. And we'll uh, I'll go into a little bit more detail about the three tube repeater uh, repl replacement project. And since it's so difficult to say, we renamed it the RFR project. Much easier. <coughs> so I'm going to talk about the uh, about our joint venture, SNC Laval and Acon joint venture. I'm going to talk about the, the, the individual companies themselves, and I'll get into a little bit more detail about the RFR project itself. In order for you to understand what it means to Clarington Municipality and the GTA, I think you have to know a little bit about the project and what we're doing. And we'll also talk about what it means for vendors. I'll start with SNC Laval. I think everyone's heard of us in Zealandland. We're the largest engineering company in Canada. We're, we're uh, active around the world. Um, we're in almost every sector, nuclear just one of them. Uh, all sectors of power, thermal, hydro, uh, distribution. We have 32,000 employees currently. Uh, every time I do a presentation, that number goes up. Um, recently, with the acquisition of CANDU, um, that gave a new dynamic to our nuclear group, and CANDU Energy is one of our key subcontractors on this project. We have projects in 100 countries, offices in 35, and we've been in the nuclear industry since the mid-60s. And last year was an exciting year with SNC Lavalin. We had our 100th anniversary. So, and here's some of the projects. Um, I put a couple of slides up for some projects that you may have heard of. The Blue Steam Generator Replacement, that one's near and dear to my heart as the project manager for that one. Uh, Portland Ener Energy Complex, downtown Toronto, probably heard of that one. A couple other ones that have been, that you may have heard of, the uh, Vancouver Skytrain, and of course the uh, 407 Highway. I don't know if you're happy with the 407. <laughs> <laughs> Our joint venture partner, uh, Acon Construction. <coughs> Acon, very similar to SNC Lavalin in that uh, they're a public company and they're one of the largest construction companies in Canada. They're, they're in virtually every sector as well. Um, well known in the nuclear industry. Um, they have the largest pipe fabrication capacity in Canada, modules as well. And one of the things that they're very proud of, one of the 50 best employers between 2008 and 2012. Here's some of the projects uh, Acon's been involved with. Um, several of these are in the nuclear industry, the lower Matagami, SNC Lavalin's involved in that as well. So a very large hydroelectric project for OPT. Spent fuel bay mods. Um, that was at Bruce and Darlington, here at Darlington. That was a very important project. Uh, SFCR project, which is currently underway at Bruce, a single fuel channel replacement. That's, uh, relative to the RFR project. Uh, turbine plate replacement at Darlington. And probably most people don't know that they were one of the constructors of the CN Tower back in the 70s. That's before my time, I think that was 1976, I think. So we brought those two companies together, SNC Lavalin and Acon, and we brought forward or brought together the strengths of both companies. And we've been we've been together in one Shape or form since the early 60s with the formation of Canatum. Those in the nuclear industry probably have heard of Canatum. That was the that was a joint venture between several companies, but uh, uh, SNC Lavalin and Acon were uh, joint venture partners in Canatum. And over the years, we've been involved in many, many different projects. Um, most notably, we just finished a very successful joint venture with uh, Acon at Bruce as part of the Balance of Plan project. And there's three large ongoing projects that uh, we're current, SNC Lavalin and Acon are currently involved with. We need an expansion, that's a hydroelectric project in British Columbia. Lower Matagami, I talked about that, it's a hydro project in Ontario. And of course, this one, Darlington RFR. Um, both companies have significant experience working with OPG. I've uh, gone through some of those projects. And here's a couple of screenshots of the of uh, the balance of plant project. Uh, 
uh, nets replacement, feed heater replacement, and general balance of plant uh, overall. Now, the RFR project. Um, I use the same graphic as Mark. I, it's the react as Mark said, the reactor, the reactor vault is very congested. It's very hard to give a, a good picture of what we're doing. So when you see, when you hear people talk about RFR or retube projects, they quite often pull out that graphic. It shows the reactor core, it shows the feeders. Now, I looked at the guest list who's here today, and I see a lot of non-nuclear people, but there are a lot of nuclear people as well. So for the non-nuclear people, the reactor is like the the engine for the power station. It produces the heat, which is used to make the steam, which drives the turbine, which turns the generator, produces electricity. That's for the non-nuclear people, that's uh, nuclear energy 101. Um, <laughs> but uh, to get into a little bit more detail, the reactor core holds the, the, the great, uh, uranium fuel bundles. There's 480 fuel channels, which hold, each of them holds uh, 12 fuel bundles, um, 13, some of them are dummies, most of them are, are real. Um, those are, you know, my pointer works, that's the, the core of the reactor, the calandria, and each, that's the 480 um, fuel channels. Each of them have a, a several tubes, calandria tubes, pressure tubes, and inside are the uh, uranium fuel bundles. And just like your car, when the car gets a lot of miles on it, it's time for an overhaul. And that's what we're doing. We call us the engine rebuilders. Uh, because we're re everything that's inside this reactor core, we're essentially replacing with new. The feeders, the feeders collect the water that passes through the, the reactor. And it's collected in the, the headers above the reactor when the pointer's not working. And they collect that hot water, send it to the steam generators, where that hot water flashes off water on the other side of that heat exchanger to produce steam. So all of that, essentially what you see there, we're going to replace. Now, one of the challenges of refurbishment, this is my third large nuclear refurbishment project. One of the challenges, just one of the challenges, is that uh, reactors were never built to be overhauled. That's good for business for us because um, it, since they weren't designed to be overhauled, it creates a lot of uh, a lot of work with companies like ours, and it's very, very interesting and challenging to think of ways to, to replace components that were never designed to be replaced. Um, one of the things that uh, when we were awarded the contract, we, we spent a lot of time with Mark, and you listened to him talk about the time he spent going around the world talking to other owners of previous projects, and one of the things that they, just one of the things that they recommended Spend time to plan the job, and, and, and that's what that's what's happening. We've got we've got four years of planning and engineering to go through. It started six months ago. The project was awarded the first of March of this year, and we've got four years to plan. Well, it's not just sitting and making schedules, but we've got we've got a, a fairly large project team now. That the time is. Time is going very quickly because not only are we doing planning, but we're designing a mock-up. We're buying long lead material. Some of the material that we have here, uh, the components I talked about, are made from very exotic materials that they you can't buy it off the shelf. We have to find vendors. Some of the stuff hasn't been manufactured in years, so it's uh, very challenging finding the vendors that will produce this material. Um, we're also designing the special tools that will that will be used to replace these components. When I talk about tools, you'll see in a minute I have some I have some uh, images of some of the tools that I'm talking about. When you hear about uh, an RFR project or a retube feeder project, you always hear the term tools. Now we're not talking pipe wrenches and and pipe wrenches and hammers, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. It's, it's, if you're into machine design, you're, you'd be in heaven when you see the tools that uh, we're designing for this project. One of the key things on the project is that we're using proven technologies. Um, it was very important. We, we listened to Mark when we were talking that 
that it's very important that everything we do you know, have a sound technical basis and it be based on something that's been done before. We didn't want the project to turn into a, a science project. That's, what you, that's a term that's commonly used in our industry. Um, now, to talk about uh, what's coming up in the next few years, Mark mentioned the Darlington Energy Center uh, and how important it was or is going to be for the project. Um, a good part of the building is going to be used for a full-scale mock-up of the, of the reactor. Well, what is the reason for this mock-up? Yes, it's a full-scale replica of the actual uh, reactor vault where the reactor's housed and the four reactors are housed in the, the station just down the road. But it's very, it's key to the success of the project because that's where we will uh, install the special tools on the, on the, on the actual uh, mock-up or reactor replica and prove their performance before we actually use them in the plant. Now this is a, this is a very key part of the project because one of the things that, that uh, Mark touched on uh, that the other owners had recommended was that they do in fact build this mock-up. I don't think there's ever been a mock-up built like this one that we're planning. There's never been a full-scale exact replica of the reactor. Other, other projects have used portions, uh, cutaways, or different bits and pieces, but no, one, no other RITU project has built a mock-up quite like this and will use the exact tools that will be used in the plant. This is a first, and we're very excited about this. The idea is that the mock-up will be built, the tools that were will be used in production, will be delivered to the mock-up. They will be used to demonstrate the actual replacement or the removal and replacement of all of the, the fuel channels in the reactor. By the time we get to the, uh, Mark mentioned the milestone in uh, June 2015, we will be able to demonstrate that all of our production tooling will work as intended in the plant. Another key uh, use of the mock-up will be the training of the workforce. Uh, it's fine having special tools, but we need the workers who know how to operate them. That's the second major um, um, advantage of a mock-up like this. We will combine the workers who are going to operate the tools with the exact tools that will be used in the plant to demonstrate their performance before they go in the, in the vault. After the tool proving is done in the spring of 2015, the workforce will come on board and use these tools. We will put them through a vigorous training program so when they go in the, the reactor vault, they will know how to operate them and will have predictable performance. Here's another screenshot of the, uh, the mock-up. Um, there's the reactor core itself. We have the east end, west end, and you can see some of the pressure tubes the clangery tubes going from one side to the other. We'll be operating on both sides. And you see we, we even installed or replicated some of the steel structure from the reactor vault. And that's to demonstrate the, uh, the motion of the tools and materials in the vault. Uh, as Mark mentioned, the vault is, is very constricted. For a, for a power station that's so large, the, the actual vault is, uh, is relatively small in comparison to some other uh, can-do stations around the world. Uh, it's quite a bit smaller than uh, Bruce A, where I just came from, and some of the can-do six plants in, uh, uh, in other countries. Now, special tooling. Um, like I said, we're not talking about pipe wrenches and hammers here. We're, we're talking about some pretty sophisticated stuff. We'll, we'll start out with the, uh, the retube control center. Um, the reactor vaults are hazardous workplaces. This, remember, this is a nuclear power station. It's a radioactive environment. And one of the goals of our project is not only to do it the project quickly and efficiently, but to do it safely. And part of this, that's one of the most important goals of the project, is to um, a safe and efficient operation. Safety means reducing the dose to workers. One of the reasons for the retube control center 
you bring the monitoring and control of many of the tools outside the reactor vault. The fewer people you have in the reactor vault minimizes the dose and exposure to workers. That's paramount to our philosophy of safety to workers. Uh, many of the tools that we have in order to in, in order to minimize that exposure, we they're designed to be operated remotely from the region control center. Um, the next, the, the next tool here is uh, an elevated work platform. It's, uh, I have some other screenshots later to show the size. It's, it's about 40 feet tall. The reactor face, the 480 fuel channels, and you can see the end from the lattice. That, that's that um, um, round object there. And the retube platform is something that we, we're designing and building and, and installing in the plant. It's about 40 feet tall. It's about 25 feet across. It's, uh, it's a motorized platform that workers uh, stand on and it raises and lowers to gain access to the reactor face. And we have one on each side of the reactor. As you can imagine, it's challenging getting this um, device into the reactor vault and it requires a lot of engineering and, and ingenuity to remove components that are there now that are in the way. It must be removed prior to the, the, uh, the redo. Now you see on top of that platform, you see what you call, that's a work table. The special tools that I'll show you in a minute are installed on this work table. And the table goes uh, to the left and to the right and indexed to to uh, stop in front of each of the, uh, the fuel channel locations. I'll just give you a few examples of some of the remote tools or some of the sophisticated tooling we're using. Now, this tooling, uh, it's been used before around the world. It has to be customized for Darlington. It's, uh, I don't think there are two nuclear power stations that are exactly the same. We're using technology that has been proven elsewhere but we're taking the best of, of everything that's been used before and rolling it into the tool sets that are going to be used at Darlington. Um, Darlington is not the same as any other can do, but it's, it's very similar in some ways. And, and um, most, most of the tooling uh, has something in common with either the Bruce uh, station or some of the can do six designs. Now, like I said, I'm not showing you all of the tools, just a representative set, just so you can get an idea of, of what we're using. There are 25 different major evolutions that we have to go through to replace the fuel channels in the reactor. And, and these tools here represent one of, one of those evolutions. And to put things in perspective, that uh, end fitting removal tool, point, I'm have a problem with this pointer here, um, that's sitting on a that's sitting on a, a work table, so it's probably I, I think that would be about 15 feet long. So that's that, that's what the tool, and the one below it is the same. And they sit on the, the work table on the platform. The pressure tube cutting tool, the one on the bottom, is such essentially a big tubing cutter. That's all it is. Now, we had a special tool set just to remove the components. Uh, in general, the tools that are used to remove the reactor components are operated automatically or remotely to lower uh, radiation dose to workers. Now, the tools that are used for insulation, once you've removed the old components, the new ones that are going in, of course, are not radioactive. You know, the precautions are not quite nearly as uh, um, serious on the install, install, and many of the tools for install are manual. The calandria tube installation, um, many of the, uh, the tools that are used are push-pull. Calandria tube, they're pushed in from one side and pulled from the other. The same as on the removal. The tubes are pulled from one side, pushed on the other. Um, a calandria is uh, I like using analogies, you may have noticed um, from the, the engine example, but a planner is just a, a big heat exchanger. It's, uh, it's like a radiator in your car, it has a tube sheet. The lattice that I mentioned is a, is a tube sheet. The 
the tubes go in and they have rolled joints to have a leak, a leak proof uh, um, a boundary. So that's what this tool does. It pushes in the calandria tube, then there's a, a rolled joint in the water tight. Here's another view, just showing the, the size. We have two workers uh, standing on the uh, retube platform, and we work row by row from left to right, top to bottom. So in each one, each one of those locations requires a 25 step process to replace all of the components inside the reactor. Now, success factors. Um, I, I think Mark mentioned this, I don't know, three times. OPEX, operating experience. Um, uh, it's key. It's one of the things that uh, we were happy to hear when we first met Mark was uh, not only did he, li did he listen to OPEX or operating experience from other utilities, but he's actually doing something about it. Um, um, a lot of the things, I came from another refurbishment project, and uh, a, lo a lot of the things that, that we learned, or a lot of the, the, uh, a lot of the lessons that we took from that project, OPG is already, um, they're already implementing on this project, and as a contractor, we're very excited about that. Parking, yeah, people laugh about parking, but he's right, it, it's, it's huge. It's a huge issue. We, we found that, that the other refurbishment projects, both of them I, I've worked on, I, it's, a, it's a, an annoyance to the workers. Um, significant work has, has been performed studying other refurbishment projects. Um, some of the things like um, um, special tooling, um, all of the things I've, I've listed here, uh, uh, we've studied through the operating experience and lessons learned process. The tooling has been used successfully in uh, can do six projects in Wolsong, uh, and recently in Point Le Pro, um, also at Bruce. Like I said before, no two reactors are exactly the same. We're taking the best of both best of all of the uh, uh, plants. Owner contractor relationships. This is another thing that uh, that we brought from other projects. Um, and Mark emphasized, he made it pretty clear that uh, on this project, um, they're looking for a very close working relationship, uh, success first base relationship between owner and contractors. We really like the sound of that. We're looking forward to working in that environment. Um, that's a lesson learned from previous projects. Um, planning, you can never plan enough. Um, four years doesn't sound like a long time. Or, or it sounds like a long time, sorry, but it's, <laughs> it's going very quickly. Um, choreography, Mark mentioned that. It's, uh, the choreography, if you go back to the the reactor phase, and you can see it. If you have, just do the math, you have 25 tool series, 25 uh, evolutions that have to be done, the 480 in individual sites. Each one takes a finite amount of time. Do the math, and you'd be surprised what you come up with. Um, you remember, it's a radioactive radiation environment where you can't do things like you would do in uh, in a normal industrial environment. There are precautions for dose for workers. So choreography is key. And one, and one, of, the, one of the things that we're going to use the mock-up for is that the training that I mentioned will be used to fine-tune the, the work process. The work packages, the work instructions that the, work, the workers will use will be fine-tuned in that mock-up. So by the time we, we have workers on the plot, the real platform, in the reactor vault, um, we'll, our intention is to have a predictable project. Predictable, uh, successful, safe project. Of course, training. Um, I've, I've mentioned this too. The, uh, we've already started the training effort on the project. Uh, training is one of the most important uh, work streams on the project. Uh, this is also another lesson learned from uh, previous retubes where the workers complained that there was not enough training. 
We didn't. We were brought in too late. We didn't have the experience required to operate the tools. And we, we've listened. OPGs listened. And one of the ma major focuses on the project, therefore, is the training of the workers. Um, the, the milestone date that we talked about will, will result in um, a tool set that is performance has been proven with a workforce that with the workforce that is ready. So, uh, I talked a lot about the, uh, the project itself. I, I thought that was important so that you get an idea of the project so you then you'll be able to put that in context. So what does that have to do with, with Clarington, the municipality, the, uh, the GTA, the province? Well, people ask me as the project director, what's the biggest challenge on the project? And for me, yes, all of the things I mentioned, the technologies, yes, the procurement, yes, we have to do it now because we, we, we know the resources are scarce and materials exotic. But when you come right down to it, the, most, the biggest challenge that we have is uh, people. It's always people. Every project is people. It's finding the skilled resources to operate the tools, to buy the material, to install it. Um, it's not just uh, the engineers. We're looking for um, planners, schedulers, cost estimators, quality assurance people. Um, the list goes on. Skilled tradesmen, uh, millwrights, boiler makers, uh, you name it. Um, We've taken the initiative, where we've been talking to UIT, Durham College, uh, we've established a chapter at UIT for construction, uh, construction management. Uh, we've got uh, s several recent graduates from UIT on our payroll in nuclear engineering, very good program. We're looking to, um, we're looking to work more closely with the, the, the local schools in that area. Um, based on our experience at uh, Bruce, um, it's a great opportunity to <coughs> expand the, the local skill sets at, at Bruce. I, I was there for four years, and and that's that was one of the the um, successes of our of our company. At the end, by the end of that project, we had we had more than doubled the skill set in our company by bringing in young people at the beginning of the project and working with experienced people. By the end of the project, they were almost like the veterans. We brought that skill set to this project. We're looking to continue that process on this one by, by bringing in uh, young recent graduates on the project, whether they're from colleges. The same would be said for the, the tradesmen. Um, we've already started uh, engagement meetings with several of the unions. Um, one of the lessons learned that we've heard was that uh, from the, the unions, that the previous refurbishments didn't engage them early enough or not at all on what was going to happen. Now we're changing that. We're, we're getting feedback from them uh, how to how to improve our work processes. So we're we're doing that on a regular basis. Um, uh, there's another one coming up in a few weeks. Um, so, from my perspective, the first two bullets are the most important, um, the, the people. Commodity items, um, as you can probably tell, the retube project is not a, it's not a project where we're going to be buying lots of valves, lots of pipe, uh, lots of building materials. It's, it's, it's quite specialized. Doesn't mean we won't be, but the focus on procurement on this job are these special tools and the reactor components. Secondary impacts. Uh, well, with, with about 750 workers that we predicted that will be on this job, um, I think we'll do a, I think we'll con contribute greatly to the traffic situation in Clarington. But uh, um, I'm experiencing that firsthand driving from the west end every day. Um, but. In reality, 750 paychecks that will be spent in the Clarington area, that's, that'll have a huge impact from our job in the, in the overall scope of the project. Um, my wife can't wait to move to the East End. 
from the, from the West End, and many of the people on the team were uh, the same way. Um, what it means to vendors? Well, I mentioned the, the focus of, of procurement on, on our project. All of the procurement, all of the procurement on the RFR project will be done by the joint venture. And I've, I've broken the procurement into four areas. Uh, the special tooling. Tooling is being designed now, and some of it is we're identifying vendors, and some of the packages have already been issued uh, for uh, quotation. <coughs> just, uh, we classified special tooling as long lead. It requires uh, design, um, build, and of course performance testing in the mock-up prior to use. So that's why that process has started now. Reactor components. Reactor components <coughs> is uh, another key, very key area. That's, I mentioned that before. Those are the, the, the exotic materials, pressure tubes, uh, end fittings, flangery tubes. Um, we started that process already, building bidders lists, um, consultations with uh, potential vendors. The last two. The last two are in common with almost any construction project, although, although at times it's difficult to call this an RFR project a construction project. It's almost like a, it's almost like an assembly line, repetitive work. Uh, 400. I went through the didn't actually do the math. The 480 fuel channels, 25 series. It's not like any other construction. Project like my recent project, steam generator replacements, where you have, where you take something out and you put it back in, you replace all of the interferences and piping, electrical cabling. Uh, Retube is not quite like that. So, um, so building materials such as structural steel, pipe, fabricated items, although we will need some, that would be fairly limited in, in scope and in the overall scheme of things, fairly limited. But we will be buying uh, materials such as uh, waste containers for uh, radioactive components, uh, um, temporary structure, structural steel components, the, the um, temporary power systems for the, that will provide power we need to do our construction work inside. Of course, typical construction services, uh, rentals, um, scaffolding, small tools, welding machines, ventilation fans, that kind of thing. Um, being a nuclear project, there are requirements. You can start with, uh, if you want to do business on, on this project, um, rule of thumb is that you should be on OPG's ASL supplier list. Um, and of course, as a, another rule of thumb is if, if the material that you're supplying will be will stay in the plant, as a general rule of thumb, you must have a QA program that's compliant with that 299.2. Um, that doesn't that doesn't apply to things like equipment rentals, and scaffolding, and the like. But like I said, the rule of thumb that the material that you want to provide is going to stay in the plant, or it's going to be part of some of the special tooling we're buying. To react Obviously, the reactor components, you have to have a, a compliant QA program. Okay, and that's all. Thank you.